Hello and welcome to Armored Cast, an Armored Core 6 PvP state of the game podcast. And my name is Shrek Rotasa. I run the tournament scene for the PC version of the game. And today I have with me Moby Geeks Out. Hey fellow mobs, Moby here. So I am I have run the channel Moby Geeks Out. What I do is while Striker runs the competitive scene of the Armored Core 6 scene, I often cover uh, the top players where they share their st uh, strategies, uh, their ACs, and their part choice, and like their mindsets, and etc. And you also get to learn a little bit about them. That is, I, I run that series. It's called Armored Legends. And I also run a series called Armored Drip where I take, uh, take a look at some of the best looking ACs in the game. And I sometimes stream as well. Yeah, you just browse Reddit and go, that looks cool. I'm going to ask them what they did with their AC. Yes, indeed. I actually am also, I am, I am finally holding my own contest as well. And we have some really I killer. I forgot about that. Uh, I, I'm supposed to be working on that with you. And then I forgot that that existed. No, no. <laughs> Wait, wait, no, you didn't forget it. No, you didn't post it. You didn't, you didn't forget about it. You, um, I, I, we, 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 we were gonna do it when the, uh, when the contest ends, like when the entry oh, period true. ends. Yes. And we'll just do it. We'll take a look at it together. No, you didn't That's forget anything. Like, it's, <laughs> we still have until April fifth for all the contest entries because we're still getting a, a small stream of them. Yeah. Um, and then you and I will take care of that. Like, there's still plenty of time. But the point is, I am, and <laughs> uh, and and uh, post edit. I, you know, you keep saying post edit. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm telling the editor to to fix it. No, I, I the know. editor the, the is... editor's leaving this in. I don't care. This is the start of the podcast. This is the uh, most important part, but we're still going to talk about it. I don't care. You know, I expect nothing less from the from the tournament or runner uh, organizer of the Scuff Cups. That is true. I do. <laughs> so I run I run a tournament series every Thursday called Scuff Cup, where if something goes wrong. Scuff Cup. That, that's the point. There's no prize pool. Just that, if something goes wrong, it's not my fault. It's... <laughs> <laughs> you can't hold me to it. But anyways, anyways, yes, anyways, I'm also finally running my own contest for. Yes, Armor you Trip are, which well. is awesome, and I'll have a link to that below if you would like to participate in that. But that's not what we're here but to talk about, Moby. We're not here to talk about right? that. So, yeah. uh, hopefully, it goes up Monday. But if not, and the mod is delayed again, then that's unfortunate. But we should be starting our co-op playthrough at this point, which we already did a co-op playthrough, at least a, a decent, a yes, decent chunk did. of the game. Um, yeah, testing out the mod, you know, why are you saying it like that? Uh, testing out the mod, <laughs> uh, you know, like reporting bugs, stuff like that. I actually reported a lot of bugs today that streamed about five hours of the mod over on Twitch. Wow. And basically what the co-op mod does, it lets you play the campaign with another person or with up to six other people, uh, with five other people, a group of six, basically. When the mod is fully done, that's the hope. At the moment, you can only really get up to two players working correctly, like you and a friend. Uh, which is unfortunate, but we are working at it. I'm reporting my share of bugs. Uh, Moby's chilling there, looking pretty. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like we we updated the mod like five times today. It was kind of crazy. As we're recording this yeah. on Friday, uh, the 29th Easter Sunday is coming up. It's pretty exciting. But anyway, uh, basically the co-op mod lets you play through the entire campaign with a friend, and they also have. Other features such as invasion, so like chat invaded us a few times. Uh, a few times today it was really fun. Um, cool. Just basically, just a uh, like you and your friend are playing through the level, and all of a sudden it says intruder alert, and then you have to fight off somebody who jumped in, which is really cool. It's a really fun way to, to play the campaign. It's a good idea to get people into the game. The biggest thing for mm -hmm. me is that the lack of easy anti cheat really helps this game, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? Like how does not having an anti cheat help the game but then you look into it and you realize that easy anti-cheat makes the game run worse and adds a bunch of latency like if you play this game on console it runs better and the, the latency you the general latency you have to your opponents is much better people are you know oh. joking about like oh lasers lasers are undodgeable whatever whatever that's mostly easy anti-cheat that's causing that like i played against a larbster mm -hmm. today which is dual double lrb double lcs a uh, heavy biped it's like a build that was really dominant back in 1.0 2.1 and it felt, it felt like a, a tier four build. Like it felt so bad because I just dodge everything. Like it did not. Yeah, matter. and then you also you also dodge Zim it, it makes Z dodging Zimmerman's like not something reserved for the top players anymore. I've been playing knocked legs constantly on the cult mod because I can just dodge everything. Like I, I it feels like I've yeah. infinite AP. It feels so good. Yeah, that's right, people. Easy anti cheat nerfs lightweights. It you does. heard it here first, dude. It's actually another huge uh, thing with the mod. Uh, playing PvP with the mod is that you have repair kits. And I didn't realize repair kits were flat mm. heal. So it's such a, it, you think, yeah. oh, that's a buff to tanks and stuff because, you know, like the, you, you, you get, you have so much more health, but it heals. No, like, actually, no, it's a nerf to tanks. Exactly. It, it, it's, a, well, it's a huge buff to lightweights because you heal like 6,000, yeah. 7,000 AP, 
and lightweights usually have about 9,000 AP, like metal lightweight builds have like a 9,000 AP. So you basically have to kill them four times. Plus, I would also argue that it makes midweights pretty, a pretty, um, a pretty good thing as well, because yes, midweights aren't as fast as lightweights. They don't have the tank as like tanks, but because bur getting burst down when we were doing campaign, because mm -hmm. often when we're doing the co-op campaign and an invader invades us late and we're like pretty low HP, like getting burst into instant death is very possible with your yeah. repair kit still intact. So that makes midweights still good as well. Like their whole repair kit system does feel like it's balancing out certain issues we have with PvP. Dude, I thought repair kits would be bad for the game, but no, I, I really think they're they're fantastic. Like terminal armor, I think it's just right. as good as pulse armor now. Right? T terminal armor Dude, is actually it's been so, so useful. nice. It's been so nice as a lightweight because like let's say so Ramen, uh Ramen Rook, who's a really good lightweight player, has been invading us a lot. Uh with me and Dark mm -hmm. Donk and me and Moby, just like us playing through the game. And right. Uh, like he'll just chainsaw me, and he would just he kept fucking chainsawing me because like chainsaw is so not, so nice now because it does because the overcoat damage matters. Like usually how uh, an armored core six PvP game roll uh, runs through is that uh, like you have to kill in two staggers. That's the golden standard is kill in two staggers, uh, mm -hmm. and which is you know which is fine because like that's why stuff like punch combos and like pile bunker is kind of like a gimmick in like high competitive play because all you really need to kill in two staggers is like. A 4,000, 5,000 AP punish. Like, unless you're a born Meza tank, that kind of breaks this rule. You have to kill him three staggers, but still, that's getting off topic a little bit. That's why Pile Bunker and Chainsaw aren't really very good. It's because you'll just pulse armor. Like, the second I get hit I, and get staggered, I just pulse armor. And I'm like, I'm at, you know, about half AP, but I'm not dead. But here, it's like you have, it takes so many more staggers to kill. Draining your opponent and guaranteeing a pulse, uh, a terminal armor or guaranteeing a pulse armor is so much more impactful when you have repair kits on the table. Like, it's really cool. I don't think it'll be great for, like, tournaments because it makes the games last longer. But I don't know, man. Like, it's... I kind of want to run a tournament with repair kits. Like, I don't... We're going to have to wait for the mod yeah, to like get repair more... Yeah, repair kit mod or something, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for the mod to get more developed and more advanced for us to actually be able to run tournaments on it, but... We can do stuff with like custom maps now because of no easy anti cheat. Right? Like I'm super like, like, excited. It was really, it was really funny because like because when I was playing through the game with Striker, we were constantly talking about, "Yo, this will be a good map. This will be a good map." Because we have so many. If you look through campaign, we have so many interesting places Dude. that could just straight up be maps. There are so or, many like, places. Scenes and stuff. There are so many places where I'm like, you put a wall there, you put a wall there, you put a roof on this. Boom, you have a great map, like an amazing map. Because the thing that's so cool right. about Armored Core Six as a competitive game is that the the cover is so unique. And playing with cover is so, so fun and freeform because you have all of these, uh, like, you have such freeform of, it's like a 3D fighter almost, but with guns. It's like, <laughs> it's yeah, like, a... like, it's like, it's like, I, I think that, like, just like, I think you, you, you can agree with me on this, like, um, the more complex and the more cover, more interesting cover there is, the more, like, the more uh, skillful play we could see yeah. where, uh, you know, hot players can take advantage of those maps. It really shows the huge skill gap. And it, that's it's amazing. It's really huge. It's like, that's, this is why if you're ever wondering why Watchpoint Delta B was never played on, like, at all through the entire competitive history of the game. If, like, if you look at any of tournaments, you're like, yeah. that, I've never seen this guy, these, these guys go to Watchpoint Delta B. Because Watchpoint Delta B is terrible. Watchpoint Delta B, there's no it's place bad. to run. There's no place to, like, get your edge to cover the kick Giant in. Giant skybox. There's no, yeah, giant skybox. There's no, there's just no cover. It's like playing Call of Duty on Final Destination. It's like, you just don't do that. Like, I'm just going to shoot you with a shotgun hey. the second I see you. <laughs> exactly. And and the more, the more interesting the map is, where there's, like, a lot of interesting, uh like, like, little bits of terrain and stuff like that mm. the more it, it 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 reduces the build check uh feeling that people get yeah, because and, as like it, yeah the thing with armored core as a as a competitive game is imagine you're playing a game like tekken or like a 3d fighter but you can change your you can customize your character like you can put different different weapons on on your on your fighting game character and yeah, there's a decent amount of garage skill in the game. Like that is a that is a big thing mm, with the game because mm. it's armored core. Like you're supposed to build it's an huge. AC. That's the idea. Not every not every part is viable in every situation. There every part has a niche. I genuinely believe that every part is a niche. Like we're finding weird use cases for Etsujin finally, which is awesome. After like a fucking month or two after the patch came out, we're finally finding people actually using Etsujin in competitive play. Because every part does have some kind of niche to it. The niche might not be yeah, great. Yeah, I'd, I'd say apart. I'd say, I'd say apart from like certain heads. Yeah, no, like, the head. Usually. There are five good heads in the game, and that's debatable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I mean. Like the TQ, <laughs> like the TQ head. I'm like, yeah, no, eh. <laughs> head. Maybe, maybe get a better scan, Vacho head, and well, we might, we might talk. But 
Uh, like yeah. at worst, if your build is very strict, like you have like just some massive energy load slash weight we weighted weapons, you'll mm -hmm. be forced to use certain heads, but that doesn't make them good, you know? Yeah, no, and that, that build has <laughs> issues itself because you'll get speed checked by certain other things. But basically, Absolutely. if you are a competent builder and you have good skill and you are able to... It's like there are three there are three main pillars when it comes to Armor Core Ghost Repetitive Game. There's knowledge check, which is like, have you done your homework? Do you know... Like, have, you, have you looked at the diagrams? Do you know how to deal with these certain builds? And these certain things, like, dude, they sent me so many diagrams last Thursday. It was so funny. Like, during Scuff Cup, they, they just sent me... I'll, I'll ask Tessera to put them on screen, but the, it's so funny to me. But yeah, so they're like, mm -hmm. have you, have you, do you know what this build does and how, to, how your build deals with it? There's skill check, like execution. Like, can you actually do the certain tech, like triangle boosting and shuffling and all this certain stuff that gets you in on this build or gets you uh, able to land shots in this build? And then there's build check, like, have you made a good AC? And my favorite part about this kind of game is stuff like Ramen Rook, I mentioned him earlier, he brought Soup. And Soup had seen, like, non-competitive play over here in the West, not sure about JP, or, like, Japan, but Soup had seen, like, no competitive play at all. But then Rubicon Rubble 1, which actually is a video on my channel if you want to go look at it, he brought Soup on a lightweight because of Lamb Core actually enabling that to be a thing. And so, if, like, you, before you had to use, like, Albacore, and he would have had to use like VP20D generator, which wasn't very great back then, so it just wouldn't have worked. But he brought soup. He brought soup with Pulse Blade, and it was the coolest thing ever. We we played one week at Angel on stream when he was on his uh, his last one of his days. It was <laughs> I mean, really it fits. funny. It fits. But like it, 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 he he brought that to deal with lambs, and he didn't lose to a single lamb. He didn't lose to a single lamb guy or uh, leg, which was a really big and problem for lightweights back then. Yeah, and for those of you who think that, you know, the best build is so simple in this game, know that, like, a lot of the top players I talk to, with some exceptions, are very finicky. They're very picky <laughs> about their builds and very indecisive. And that's not a, not, and I'm, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that a lot of parts are trade-offs that they constantly wonder which mm -hmm. one is better because they're all trying to buy and win these tournaments, right? Dude. For, for the prize pool and bragging rights or just straight up bragging rights because it's, it's cool to win. Yeah, it's but, really like, cool. Yeah, like, and a lot of these people are very, very picky with their, like, finicky with their, like, parts. So, like, I, I know a lot of these, like, Armored Legends people where I feature their build, and they, but then they're known to constantly switch between mm -hmm. two sets of parts over and over again because they just can't decide. I mean, so hey, we can talk about... clear dry as you think. We can talk about how most, most if not all of your, uh, your Armored Legends builds are outdated. Hell, I think your JC one, your most recent one, is kind of outdated, too, because JC just played, like, a midweight dual Zim facade build in the most recent tournament and got, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fourth and, with it. So Yeah, <laughs> and my purpose with these things isn't to tell you, use this build to win. <laughs> it's more like... I want you. That's I. That's you know. That's not why I spend like entire days editing a video where I interview the other guy where I rarely speak. It's because I want you to see. Hey, what is this person thinking? Like, yeah. what makes this person like think? Why did they choose this part? You go. Oh, you, here you could learn about stat density. You could learn that some parts, some some stats are not like really um, prized with this particular player. And you learn that you know you learn that sometimes they just choose the part because they think it looks cool. You never know. Like. <laughs> And that, as, yeah, that rarely like, happens. Really I'll, tell, I'll tell you, yeah, that, it's rare really that that happens. Rare. It's rare, but like sometimes, like when they have to choose between two parts that are about equal, where they have like slightly, they're they're, they're finicky about it. They'll just go, "Oh, I like this because I like the ephemera head because it looks like alien." Yeah, like exactly. An alien or something. It's like but, you like the versus like, Veril, Like the the difference is not yeah. super huge. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought it up, Striker, because, yeah, my point is not to show you, hey, these are the newest builds, and, like, you know, <laughs> and, and, then, like, and then, like, for you to copy exactly, I want you to learn why these people choose to build, mm -hmm. and that way you could apply that idea to your own build. If you're copying the build... We've gotten build hella build, off topic, like, by the way. We're not talking about the Yeah, comp. we have. So, so, but the point is, I just want to quickly go into that and just say, hey, like, no, I get that's it. not I, the purpose. I really it. get yeah, it, yeah. and honestly, it, it's... it's... I, I just want to talk the reason the purpose of this podcast is to talk about armored core and how much like we enjoy <laughs> it for an hour and a half because it's yeah. it's really because there's a lot of toxicity around this game people like especially when the game first came out people like saying it was like skillless or whatever the hell i was called out multiple times for being a from software shell because i liked the game so much which is hilarious to me uh but like <laughs> the there's a lot of toxicity around this game a lot of people really don't like the game at least be part of it and i MD exact opposite. Like I, I will play this game even off stream. Like I'll get off a ten hour stream and still want to play more. Like that that first ten hour stream I did with you, where we uh, where we tested out the co op mod to get back on traffic a little bit. I immediately yeah. like after like an hour and a half of like ending like after ending stream, 
I jumped on a Loyal Bones fight club because I wanted to play the game more. <laughs> I wanted yeah, to be off, cool. completely off stream. Just like I wanted to just play the game. I wanted to play Laser Blade because I hadn't played Laser Blade like, all yeah. day. I wanted to, I wanted to hit yeah. the funny anyways, reads. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, exactly. So uh, like, I'll back on the topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could go. So what, I believe what we were talking about was like the three pillars of the competitive game, and I really think that. Um, like with seamless co-ops, the better the better latency that we have, and the new maps that we can do, the, like it'll become even easier to get into the game because you can see like, oh shoot, that looks really cool, and the fact that like you can actually dodge lasers now and like dodge these things now instead well, you of having have like, a different meta. Exactly, that's what I'm th that's what I'm thinking. It's like without like easy anti sheet. Dude. And like with you having control over like co-op maps, we might have a brand new meta. Yeah, that's the thing. Hands. It's like you can have because like, there's an issue. Uh, with our map pool right now, like the ranked map pool is not very good. Like the extra maps that we got from ranked, the only really good one that we got, I guess we got two, like Continuum City A and Watchpoint Delta A. Those are the only two really good maps that we got. And before then, we kind of only had yeah. like Xylem and Jorgen were like the two agreed upon really good maps. So we have like four yeah. maps that everyone can agree upon are really good maps. Maybe Grid 86 A, but like well, whichever one's the but lower the grid co -op, it opens up the whole exactly. campaign every corner of it every like the, single the map roof of the, the, the weird roof of xylem like on top of the bottom part of xylem like imagine like if we just <laughs> use this map put some put some borders around it killed all the, the the enemies and made sure that the mission doesn't really end like the way it's supposed to and boom we just have a brand new map this is yeah. untapped potential and striker was like drooling over it for like five <laughs> I nine was, hours straight it's, it's such a cool <laughs> idea and especially because of like uh, so if you look at elden ring like if you google den maps nexus mods you'll see what like the elden ring community has made because they have they have a server that they can play on that doesn't have some easy anti-cheat they can make custom maps mm -hmm. like the den has like 15 maps you can play on if you're playing in an Elden Ring tournament. Like 15 custom made maps perfectly made for Elden Ring PvP. And I'm like, damn, that could be us. We could have like our <laughs> own could we could have our own custom maps perfectly made for, for PvP. And if something really dumb shows up, like grid 86 upper, uh, I don't know what it's called, like grid 86 B, I don't know. Let me grab it real quick. I have a folder of all of them. But like there's a there's a grid 86, grid 86 B. Yeah, grid 86 B has this really dumb spot on it. We can go like under the map and just chill. And your opponent has to come to you, and it's really stupid. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how they they went, they missed it during testing or whatever. But like, if if we have one of those issues in a custom app, we can just change the map. We can just fix a boundary. that. And I think that's super it, it, fucking cool. Like, yeah, yeah. There's a uh, like for example, uh, Valorant. They like to change their maps in little ways that matter a lot. So like like that exact way. <laughs> um, it's, 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 yeah. Dude, on my OBS, shout out to Fletch to Fletchek. Fletchick, I think this is for the first time chatter exclamation mark discord just showed up on my screen. <laughs> yeah, shout out to that person. That's a, that, that's fucking crazy. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it's like, like exactly. Like we can just change wherever we want when it comes to these maps. We can add more new maps. Hell, I could add a new map to the pool like every week. We could do like a speed cup is a point I do where it's locked to one map for us to like try these maps out. Maybe the community falls in love with it. Maybe like I did watch point Delta B at one point. Let's see if it really, really yeah. was that bad. It is. It's really that bad. It's a bad map. Nobody likes yeah. it. Uh, we did Watchpoint Delta A, <laughs> and that map actually surprised me. You, you, that was really fun to play on. I, the, like the Juggernaut in the middle actually adds a decent amount of complexity to the map. But besides yeah, that, it doesn't really did. have anything else, which is unfortunate. No, no, I like I like that better than the the giant gear tower in in. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I I don't yeah, like that because it's a little too much. Like it it really gives a huge advantage to burst burst weaponry type like mm -hmm. players that have ap lead but like that juggernaut tower so it's like it's just big enough that it, it is really important and fight center around it yeah. but it's not so big, huge and like that like it blocks everything my so issue i is actually it's really like, like the juggernaut cover my issue is it's the one interesting part of the map like everything else is boring there needs to be it more. is the one we need more part. we need more dead juggernauts in, them, in that map. Like, it, there's a part of me that that's wondering like what makes a good armored core 6 pvp map like i have no idea yeah. Well, I have I have some idea because like Xylem is a beloved map in the community, but the skybox no, is a I little mean... bit too big, and like Jorgen is a beloved map in the community, but there's like a rat nest. We call it the rat nest, and like the the back left corner of the screen from Alpha Spawn, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like in the back left corner of the map, there's this little like hallway that you can just walk into, and it creates uh... some like really silly situations where it's like I'm gonna sit here and you have to come in here and fight my you know dual Zim. Yeah, I'm there's, chilling there's right here waiting for you. Like... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
No, it's like it, but it, I go, I'll go with Jimmy. Like, it, it, are those parts of the map good for the game? Like, are they healthy for the game? Because they do s create some silly scenarios, but those silly scenarios are strategic. It's like you, it, it's like uh, Bone Day Dunes A, perfect example. It has this weird tent like structure, it's like a bo broken part of the strider, and you can go in there and just kind of chill, and your opponent has mm -hmm. to come to you, which it's kind of interesting. I, I feel like that's an interesting part of the map's design. And mm -hmm. it, it's like what makes a competitive Smash Brothers map, because there's that has the same exact issue where there's like a billion maps, a billion stages, and you're like, okay, do we want slants? Do we need slants? Are slants bad for the game? Are hazards good for the game? That's a question that I feel like at this, doesn't get brought up even in, like, enough in Smash. Is like, I, I, what, this map is too big. This map is too small. Like, it's what do we do with it? And I'd love to just get into like a map editor, like DS Map Studio, if that ever gets updated for Armored Core 6, and just fuck mm -hmm. around and find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know you were trying to learn that from the modders. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, but I actually wanted to talk a little bit about, about the co-op, like go on off, go off on a little yeah, bit. Yeah, go that ahead. Okay? That's what we're talking about today. Yeah, so like the co the potential of co-op is like part of it is like it's breathing new life into the campaign mode, which I have Dude. I feel like I haven't really touched as a as someone who covers mostly the PvP or like the, the, the AC making like the, the decal like scene. Like I have, I feel I haven't really touched it since I S ranked at all, unless like I have to go in there for like footage or like a background or something like that. But like, it breathed new life into the game, like, and it made me see the like where I was enjoying it again, like where because of the co op mode, like you know how like you and I did that uh, stream where uh, we started from the scratch, so we had mm -hmm. to like build our own parts. We Dude. knew what all the really good parts are, except so they're fun. not available. It was and, so and as fun. A result, it makes us use things we don't really use. <laughs> and try to be creative with what the parts we have. Hey, look, this AC looks cool, except it has a Joso generator. That was not until we have more money. Dude, you know, I got, it's kind of cool. I got Ling Tai immediately. I got I got off that Joso. I hate Joso. I hate Joso Gen no, no, so no, much. You, get you, me off of this. You get the point. Like, yeah, like a lot of the a lot of some of the best parts like that you recognize like are not necessarily available like until like mm -hmm. much later in the game, which makes you more creative. It was like so the coral cool. generator, for example. Uh, it's like a lot you can, of the best FCSs are also not available. Yeah, like you can transfer your save file over from uh from your vanilla you save could, file into could. uh into the cop mod. And a lot of people who invaded us did that. So we had to fight back with like this absolute garbage that like isn't super Which great. Which weirdly balances it out. <laughs> yeah, it does. Like, it's a two v one, so the, you you would think that the uh, it's a, it's an obvious advantage. But the invader has like the high tech parts, which is what the invader <laughs> also has the other enemies in that thing. You know, like it, it's, it's so it, fun. It, and also the invader could just straight up be better than you. Like when Risa invaded yeah, us, dude, the one wing oh angel was, was so head, scary. By the way, it was so scary. Like the, Risa is one of the best players over here in the West if not the best player over here mm -hmm. in the West, wins, like, she won, uh, Scuff Cup recently, uh, like, like yesterday. yesterday, yeah, yesterday, she won, she, uh, she got the bracket reset, yeah, congratulations, it was awesome, her. yeah, no, Risa is a fucking monster, but, like, she invaded she us, she kept invading us, I yeah, she kept you invading know, us, you know, oh, out we... of the six times, <laughs> out of, like, the six times at one point, like, it's more than that, but out of, like, the six times in a row she invaded us at one point, she, we defeated her on the sixth time, we finally but, like, got her, it, we, we got defeated, <laughs> Dude, we got not even and, defeated. You know, we got melted. We got obliterated. Like yes, she, she took all of her repair kit, all of our repair kits, and just killed us. Like we were dead. Good night, bye guys. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was using like it, it wasn't even like she was using the actual misery index. She said she was using like a team fight version. So that yeah. was neat. She was but using, the point like, is like zones. it gives us it gives us that rush of like you know how like you know how Dark Souls and Elden Ring when there's yeah. uh, when there's an invader, right? The invader does have some limitations, but often they do come with better gear like optimized mm. gear for invasions they are often pe invading people who are they're, they're often getting ganked in the way that they're outnumbered sorry they're often outnumbered but they can use their the, the environment to their advantage and often they're very skilled at fighting multiple people at once then that weirdly makes it a little bit more balanced like not necessarily yeah. fair i guess but it does make it feel like that the invader isn't like just gonna die instantly as soon as they spawn which does which did happen in the nah, co-op mod that, but that I does did, happen I a lot in the Elden ring invasions i will say yeah. that but and that's fair but like the point is like invasions make the game so much more fresh it makes it, it gets my heart beating whenever an invader comes in because you don't know how skilled they are well i mean when, when we were doing the co-op mod testing we, we knew because it was either risa <laughs> or like moonlit it was but, like, like risa we, moonlit is, ramen like, it's like uh oh <laughs> i know right it's like, oh which flavor of ass kicking are we gonna get today <laughs> um but yeah getting my getting invaded gets my heart like heart like you know pounding and a skilled invader finding two players especially with like superior gear is awesome like it's, so it's kind of awesome like it, um 
And, and you know, plus the invader can ally with the boss to fight you. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? That is. Dude, as that invader, was super you fucking have, cool. You could have the boss fight with you. Dude, and I, we were playing it's today. Like, no, Rusty, we, we were, boss. We were playing. Uh, we were playing a, a few days ago, and Ramen. We have mm -hmm. this joke in the community that Ramen Rook again, a very look good white light, uh, light player, because he he got like fourth place at a preset tournament running uh, Steel Haze. We make jokes that he's Ooh. like Rusty in real life. And right? we were trying out the uh, Break the Carmen line, whatever that mission's called, that gives you infinite yeah! EN. And, <laughs> yeah, and then Ramen got pulled into the boss fight with Rusty. So we got we had a 2v2. With, I, I can't remember who it was. Uh, Rusty Dirk clone Donk. versus Rusty. Yeah, it was like, it was like Ramen you. and Rusty versus me, and I can't remember who was with me. I think it was Moonlit. But it was so funny. It was... <laughs> It probably was cool because all of you also had infinite energy in like yeah, that mission, it's so, I believe. Dude, it's so fun. It, 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 like, dude, right. infinite energy uh, PvP is so funny because if the, if the opponent has a melee weapon, you're just fucked. You're just guaranteed to get hit. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like you can't yeah, it, stop it, assault boosting or they're going to hit you. <laughs> so you just <laughs> go in a straight line forever. <laughs> I know, like, you do the anime, like, smash against, like, the Rusty, I get it. But that's my point. It's like, y y even in Dark Souls games, apart from the Mirror Shield boss, that was, like, a rare exception. Like, you uh, usually invaders can't fight you with the boss, mm. with your summons and stuff like that. But that's cool. We could do that here. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, kind of, I think that's kind of special. You know what I mean? I, so I don't know cool. if you know who I'm talking about with the Mirror Shield boss, but it was I don't, a really, but... like, it was... <laughs> But there was one mirror shield boss who would summon like a specific type of uh, player invader, Is it and like they a... would fight alongside you. Yeah. Are you talking about Dark Souls too? Because like I'm thinking, my I believe it's two. Is... Yes, it's two. Okay, it's I, two. I haven't. I, haven't I believe it's two. two. I'll be real. Uh, the only my experience with yeah. that is like the uh, the church boss in uh, in Dark Souls three. Yeah, that too. Super that fun. that's on also another exception. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the yes, church. Yes. He's, he's fucking that's dope. Three, I love I that boss. I can't remember we didn't have anything like that in Elden Ring. It been so fun. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, it just it just it breathes new life into the game. It just it makes me so excited for the game's future because again, now that we have a way to play without using anti cheat, the floodgates are open. We can do whatever the fuck we want to this game. Like yeah, as we far can have as a brand new tournament meta. Oh, Vumzy! Like shout out to that. Guy. He's working on a balance patch for the game. Like right now, like he's done some really neat that things. Like adding, mod, right? dude, he added weight scaling to Lance. The heavier your AC, the more damage Lance does. I think that's dope as hell. Like it's it's just it is such a cool. It's such a cool time to be yeah, an and also the lance, fan. Also, the lance weapon is one of the weapons that got really weirdly buffed without the easy anti-cheat, I believe you It said. feels so much better because like, of the lower latency, you don't slide off your opponent nearly as often. So it, it feels like a mm -hmm. much better weapon. Like, it, all of this... Right. Because, okay, so From Software is a Japanese company. They they mostly make games... Uh, when, when it, if you're wondering why the netcode is so weird with Elden Ring, they don't have to make a really good netcode because because the JP region is so... Has such good infrastructure you're basically playing your next Their door internet neighbor is light speed ahead of ours exactly like you're Here basically playing your next door neighbor if you're playing with somebody across the entire country like it, it feels almost seamless the uh, the connection you're getting with your opponent um so the jp scene hasn't really had an issue with latency ever because they just don't have to even with easy anti-cheat making it bad or making the latency worse they don't really care which is why like mm -hmm. they haven't really complained about about other ring or armored core uh, netcode. If you look at J uh, Japanese Armored Core Twitter or Reddit, they just don't. I don't know if they have a Reddit, but like the Japanese Twitter, they never complain about netcode. Like they did, they yeah. did. I think once, and that's because somebody was on the JP servers as a as a uh, like an American player, which you know is bad. But yeah, like they don't really complain about the mm -hmm. netcode. So, like from software doesn't really have that an incentive to energy, add. Yeah, yeah, the, and from software doesn't really, from software doesn't really have a, a incentive to make their netcode better. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. Like that, that sucks that that happens. So stuff like the co-op mod and just ways to bypass. Because basically, what's happening is we're we're not connecting to from software servers. We're connecting to just directly the Steam servers. So we mm -hmm. don't have to worry about like from software seeing yeah. us and when, when we us were, or whatever. When we were co-oping with invaders, like it was me, Striker, who lives in an entirely different state, like yeah. from each other, with like a European player invading us. <laughs> when it worked, it worked nearly flawlessly yeah it, it, emphasis on when it worked because the cult mod is still on very early alpha like it's in 0 0.1.1 yeah right we now. were having problems with especially invasions and some missions would get stuck like the jailbreak mission dude the jailbreak mission um, it was so yeah. funny <laughs> it just actually reset our <laughs> progress like four missions back it was hilarious yeah so we had to like do that solo but we're you know that, that's why the mod is being worked on like it was delayed yeah. a little bit because there's a lot to like there's a lot of kinks to work out um mm -hmm. yeah but but yeah, like a bad game with friends can be good, but a good game with friends is divine. It's like so it's just that cool. Good. It's so good. Like the
the campaign dude i i gained like eight million comb today playing the playing campaign missions and just like doing it with dirk and moonlit and everyone else like dude, we at one point we have so the limit it's in the carla mission right uh it's we had yeah me moonlit and dirk on a team uh going through the mission cool. and we just got constant invasions by mole by vumsy by ramen like we just had like it and was this cool. non-stop slug fest of us just like calling people out and trying to take them down it was just it was so fun and then snail yeah, jumped in the mix cool. at one point like it was wild yeah. <laughs> no no that's what i mean and that also works into the lore the fantasy of being a mercenary and how the co-op is actually spiritually sense. succeeding and it giving that back. we're mercenaries like they're gonna hire like in real life too like and, and in fiction they, they, the opponent's side will also hire mercenaries in response and i know like, we're gonna get comments yeah. about this i know we're gonna get comments about like why didn't from software just put the game put this in the game in the first place well from what i know from either just talking to people who worked on the game or talking to mm -hmm. just like like this is like interviews and stuff like that they weren't sure how this game would do in the modern market. So the moment that the campaign was done, or the moment it was projected to be done, they released the game. That's how. That's why PvP barely functioned at the very start of the game's lifespan, which sucks because that's probably what caused a lot of people to quit the, the PvP. But you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, so like, that's why PvP barely worked. That's why the the, camp, the balance was so bad at launch. It's like they, once the campaign was done, they launched it because they had no idea how it was gonna do. Now, obviously, it did really, really well. And they're very happy with how it done because they want they, how, how it did because they want to do more armored core stuff in the future, but they didn't really have a lot of faith in the project, so that's why they didn't really do a lot of stuff that like a lot of legacy stuff like uh, co-op and things like that. Yeah, and that's why I have a lot of hope. I really hope that FromSoft takes a lot of these like a lot of what we are talking about about potential and fixes and stuff, mm -hmm. and I really hope they to they put it to a four answer type like extra like. Kind of, you know how like, cause Armored Core Four. If you if you play through Armored Core Four and for, compared to For Answer, it, it feels very lacking in many ways. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the way the game works, cause it's a completely new generation, so new mech movement that we had nexts now. Which and this is the first time messing with this kind of formula. But For Answer added so many new parts. The missions were so much better. Like I really hope we get that kind of expansion game. Like, Most likely, next, I, really I mean, so because the thing is, just like imagine if you had an extra two years of development for this game. That's basically what, like, right? what I'm thinking. Like, let's say we get Armor Core Six answer in a year or two, like from now. Like, that's so much more dev time. That's so much more stuff you can do. Like, yeah, and they're, they're building on top of what's such. already there. The yeah, gameplay and, mechanics, and what's are already, already there. there is fantastic. Especially since, like, mm -hmm. now that we have. If let's say they keep easy anti cheat and they keep this really dumb cheat engine that makes the game run worse and just like play worse just with latency and stuff, we still have the co op mod. And you might be thinking, right. well, it'd be kind of annoying to play on a mod, but it's super easy to install. And like, I'm going to have a video up on how to install. I might even already have a video up on install if it's actually released on Monday, if we can get all the bugs out. But like, it's super easy to install. And I promise you, it'd be easier to, you know, make Armored Core 6 answer have, like, be able to port over the mod to that, like, that game. So, yeah. even if that happens, we're still going to get a fantastic game, which we can play without these weird limitations. Like, it, it's just so exciting to be an Armored Core fan right now. Like, I just cannot wait for the future. Like, as I said many, 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 many times, this is the dark age of the modern Armored Core. Straight up, it is. It's, it's the dark age of it. Because the game's not very popular, because the game launched in a really bad state. The game is very bare bones when it comes to features because it was launched the moment that the campaign was done. And From Software didn't really didn't have From Software didn't really have a lot of faith in the franchise at this time. So imagine what's gonna happen next. And that just makes me that just puts me over the moon. Like I'm I'm so excited about that. And I would actually like to talk a little bit uh, while we're on that, I would like about like the getting excited about what's coming next. I would really like to talk about just how big co-op as a concept is and how it can be applied to armored core so let me let me that's because i wrote some notes here so basically put like co-op you know we talked about the fantasy v we talked about how it's fun with friends i mean a lot of things are fun with friends but good things are way more fun with friends especially like uh, doing co-op at striker that was a pleasure Dude. but the point is like co-op is as a concept keeps a lot of games that you don't expect alive if you guys know what rts's are the 
um, the real time strategy games. Like I'm talking like StarCraft and stuff dude, like that. It's gonna talk about StarCraft um, for an hour, Moby. Yeah. We get no, no, no. it. No, no, no. I'll do it. I'll do it quickly. I'll do it quickly. It's all right. Me, you know, all I'm saying is catch me in Halo Wars One. That's all I'm saying. Catch me in Halo Wars. Halo Wars is Halo Wars. Like you know, maybe you could apply to this. I don't. I don't know too much about catch it. Me, but Halo catch is Catch me awesome. in Lego Battles on the Nintendo DS and we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> what the fudge? <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, um, there, there was this video by uh, Giant Grant Gaming, and he was talking about like why a lot of modern RTSs fail, and the one of the big reasons he talked about was that. StarCraft 2, for example, a lot more players play the co-op mode than they do the latter. And Interesting. the co-op mode is it goes it goes like you choose a commander that has these ridiculously OP abilities that are not available in PvP. And they they do they do these missions against some pretty difficult AI where they just throw like hundreds of really powerful units at you. And only by working together with your really powerful commanders are you able to win. And imagine That's if cool. something like that was applied to Armored Core, where imagine that you had imagine like just beyond just what we have. Imagine, oh, what what if co-op only parts that were that could be unlocked by playing co-op mode? What if they huh. throw multiple ACs at you at the same time? See, someone that okay. I someone that I really want, and this is what Ver Verdict Day had this. I need to play go back and play Verdict Day very badly because I missed that generation because I was a I was a four answer drone. Uh, <laughs> I I want raid bosses. Like I want it so bad. Yes. Like I I want to do whole streams where I just help people fight raid bosses and unlock the parts that are behind the raid bosses. Like I want to do whole. Whole, I, I want to announce on like YouTube community posts, like, hey, I'm you know I'm helping people unlock raid parts right now. If you if you need your raid parts, come join in and I'll help you out. Yes, you should. Cool there would be there should be some bosses that are so hard that you only you need a co-op partner for it, yeah. and there should be some bosses that are so then, difficult that you need could, a team for it. Dude, and then there could be and then there could be videos on YouTube which are like solo speed kill of like this raid boss yeah. and like that's there could be a whole community our version. exactly like there could be a whole community around this kind of stuff. Like Borderlands Two is a game that's really very near near to my heart. When you said you were messing, we were uh, you had the uh, you were going to be late a little bit. I immediately booted up Borderlands 2 because there's a new like loot randomizer mod that I've been playing the hell out of recently. Like, I, and the thing that keeps me playing Borderlands 2 is the raid bosses. It's like building up a character to go and challenge the raid bosses and go solo them. Like it's so yes. Yes. fun and, to and, do that. And here's and I wanted to talk more about like specific about co-op parts. The reason why I'm so big on that is that I don't want these parts to be available for PvP. And here's the reason, right? If these parts are only available in co-op, they don't have to be balanced. That's true. They don't have to be balanced against other now, PvP players. Every camp, every part we have right now available to us can be used in PvP. There as a is, result, it has to be balanced. I, I will push back against that a little bit because there is a as, okay. as a Borderlands player, there is such a thing as PvE balance. Like people talk about, like, oh, it's a PvE game, things don't have to be balanced. They do because there is a thing. So there is a B shield in Borderlands Two where if you put it on, you gain ant damage and ant damage on all your shots. Basically, all of your shots do more damage. And it does like let's say like six thousand more damage is what you get on all your okay. guns. Like if you're already using an assault rifle, that sounds balanced, right? You just add six thousand damage to your assault rifle. But when the game first launched, you could use a shotgun, which every single pellet on that shotgun would get the six thousand damage. This combined with the conference call, which had an extremely high fire rate and a lot, a huge pellet mm -hmm. count, just melted every raid boss. Yeah. Every raid boss just yeah, died yeah. instantly. Which yeah, that's and a problem. I'm not saying... Like that, if that was still in, the, like that got removed and people got really upset. But if that was still in the game today, I wouldn't be playing it very much because if there's a way to just and... instantly win against the highest, like the the most tough enemies, that sucks. Is all the speed kills no. against raid bosses are like really cool setup based things, like draining yeah, all of your ammo. Yeah, skill and some of some thinking to exactly I get it, like. exactly so like there is something called there is some a, a merit to pve balance because it keeps the yeah, game yeah. alive if let's say we had yeah, a yeah, really powerful well, let, me, let me let me finish this real quick and <laughs> i'm sorry i, I know I, I talk a lot like let's say we had a really powerful weapon right that every single ac yeah, yeah. wanted to use for this raid boss like uh, uh what's that destiny 2 rocket launcher called it's like no destiny 1 rocket launcher called the, it's oh, like the g something uh... <laughs> I'm gonna Google Destiny One rocket launcher. It's gonna. Norman gun. It, it, it was a Nerf gun. Destiny One rocket launcher. Destiny One rocket launcher. What is it? The Gallerhorn. The no. Gallerhorn. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So the Gallerhorn, from what I can gather, because I didn't play a lot of Destiny. Destiny. Uh, I didn't play a lot of Destiny One, but the Gallerhorn was like a requirement. Because a, a requirement on every single raid team, like everyone had to have a Gallerhorn because it was so powerful. If we had that same issue then all of the ACs are going to look kind of similar in Armored Core. Like, it's not just, let's put this weapon on because it's really strong. It's, okay, I have this weapon on, which means I want to run on a Tetrapod, which means I want to run this generator, these arms, because that's the best arms for this weapon. 
You, you see what I mean? Like, it kind of, like, fall, it collapses in on itself. It, let's say, like, a stun needle. Like, let's say stun needle was the weapon, right? And having one stun needle was, yeah. like, required for this raid boss. It's like the Ice Worm fight, right? Well, mm -hmm. that already locks in one of your four weapons. That kind of sucks, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know. There is something to be said about that. Maybe... It's a gimmick boss, like the Ice Worm boss fight. It's not my favorite. Yeah, maybe... It's interesting. I don't really know how you would do something like that. Maybe something like overed weapons, like in a Verdict Day, where you just had like this big, this big ass like thing on your back. Maybe restricting those to PVE only could be fun because that's like an, a secondary slot kind of thing. Like the, I think those are the only back weapons in Verdict Day, right? The only back weapons in the game are overed weapons. Is it the case? Uh, I forget. Ah, uh, it's been a while for me too. Like I played through it once. I it see. wasn't my favorite. I was also a four answer like fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> Movement's just better. That's all I'm um, saying. Movement's just better in our in four it, answer. That's all, that's all I'm saying. It is. It felt <laughs> like like uh, like I thought it was interesting. I, I thought I thought Armor Core Five was interesting because you could like kind of do this kind of hop on the building to go climb higher. You know, um, maybe maybe they should just an Armor Core four answer too. And then they would have uh, then would have taken us ten years to get another game. That's all Dude, I'm saying. The, re the <laughs> return to the return to next would be so much. Well, <laughs> Dude, oh it would God. be so funny if like we just get into a next and then we just <laughs> obliterate every single AC. Do you have any idea how cool it was in Armored Core? I think Verdict Day, where the last boss was a next. It was like That's a so black dope. glint. That's so, black oh, glint. It plays, it plays white glint's theme, but like a twisted version of it. It's so cool. Dude, I can't wait to play that game. Um, That's gonna be so fun. Yeah. But to kind of respond to what you said about the weapon balance, yeah. um, for to to bring back to bring like StarCraft in a way, all the characters obviously are way stronger than any of the PvP variants. But what I mean by lack of balance, I don't mean completely trivializing it. What I mean is that these characters, these commanders that you play as, where they have these completely overpowered mechanics in a PvP setting, in a PVE setting, you just th you you make it so challenging that like even if these characters are powerful, it is extremely difficult. For most players to handle it solo, if not basically impossible. Interesting. Um, not, if if they're skilled enough, they could do you know they could do plenty. But the point is like, all, the enemies they throw at you are buffed. They often have like these special things where oh they'll blow up like if they if they die like oh like they they have double the health like well not double the health but they they do more damage oh they're in, they're in a combination you're, you're not used to. Um, but my point is that by having like these co-op weapons that are a little bit stronger in exchange, they're not available for P PvP. They you get the cool factor. People really care <laughs> about the cool factor they when do. they use these weapons. Like the cool oscillator. Half of the reason why it's it's so it's cool so is that you get this giant red laser beam and you do this <laughs> anime like little wave, you know. And you add demon oh, tech God. to it and he, demon blade tech to it, and it gets even more ridiculous. Dude. But okay, we gotta talk about demon blade for more... a moment. So demon blade. Okay, so I have to explain what demon blade is. Demon blade is the thing where you go in the hard lock at a certain frame of you charging the oscillator. And you do it at a very quick 360. It is one of the coolest fucking techs in this entire game. I swear to God, if you if you patch it out from software, I'm gonna be really fucking mad at you. So don't do it. I'm already mad at you because you banned a lot of players because they had to fix their corrupted <laughs> save file by by messing with their game files. And you're like, oh, that's wrong yeah. game file. You're cheating. Die. It's like I'm already mad at you for that because a lot of because Taka Fumi was supposed to play in the last tournament, but he got banned like day of. So I'm really mad at you. What? But, oh, I'm yeah, sorry it's to hear fucked that. up. But yeah, like um, I'm, I'm already really mad at you. But I'll be even mad, even more mad if you patch out Demon Blade or other cool melee tech that we have. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for explaining that. But my point is, like, Coral Oscillator almost feels like one of those weapons that are like almost co-op-y because there's a lot of spectacle. Like going mm. back to like what I talked about with co-op commanders of StarCraft, these people do like really big, big stuff. They like summon black holes. They 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 summon <laughs> like units that like normally take eons to make instantly. Like, and there's a lot of huge spectacle to it. And people, we've, turns out people love that stuff. They like to do cool, explosive things like, yeah. like, um, like that, that are just ridiculous. And I think adding that to co op mode in exchange for making enemies way stronger. Like, we're talking like, oh, let's just have them throw like seven ACs at you at once. Screw it. Cause you've got I, these powerful weapons and you have a teammate who also has pretty powerful weapons. I feel like the best way to go that. about something that is have like different PvP and PvE scaling. I think that could be interesting. That's fair. That works too. That works too. Yeah. Instead of oh, having well, weapons that were that were designed for PVE, because like imagine if let's say your favorite weapon in the game is like laser blade, for instance, like laser blade. Like that's my favorite weapon in the game, even though it's complete and total ass. I still like using <laughs> it. It's really fun and it feels really good, and I hit it. But like it's even in my channel logo. Like you can look at my my fucking logo and you can see it. But like laser blade's my favorite weapon, right? If there was a it's a PVE exclusive melee weapon that's just better than Laser Blade in every way. 
but I couldn't use in PvP. Could melee cancel like, with that it, would and then, like, it spins sink, four you know? times. <laughs> yeah, it spins four times, yeah. <laughs> that would kind of yeah, suck, because, like, cause, like it, it wouldn't be exactly like Laser Blade. That would just be silly. It would just be a better version of Laser Blade out it there. It would be, like, a better version only available for co-op, basically. Yeah, exactly, um, and I think that's kinda, that seems kind of silly to me. No, exactly. Well, yeah, but, like, I, I, would, I would love something like that, because I think it works really well for when other games do, like, a co-op mode, where they have, like, these exclusive things... That mostly only work in co-op, and uh, like, and they're mm -hmm. like, um, they're not really available in a PvP set, like in the exact sense. So I really think that could help out. And ta further talking about co-op, imagine if certain missions you were restricted to like Archibus only because you're cosplaying as like a not cosplaying, but like in the mission lore wise, you're playing as an Archibus, like <laughs> Archibus one of the V's. So you're restricted to Archibus parts only. So this mission becomes instantly so much harder because I mean you're you're restricted to certain weapons and like and parts. I will say because I know we're gonna get comments about this. Archibus ACs are not only restricted to Archibus parts. I will say. They're not, they're not, but imagine like there's, imagine some restriction to it that like you can only that have can certain cool. parts, like certain amount of parts that, that it will make you to be more creative and it would I also think... make you feel thematic. And I think that's actually very important. One of the coolest parts about Armored Core for me is that there's limitless potential, like legitimately limitless potential. Like there, there is so much cool shit you can do. Like people were thinking about a booster that is like super high EN cost, but you have like infinite EN or like close to it. Not that that was really, I think that's a really cool idea. Like, imagine a booster that has, like, a thousand EN, like, the, the current highest is, I think, Burzal with, like, 430-something. It has, like, more than double that, <laughs> but you have infinite EN, so it's, like, you'd have to run something, like, double Sampu to even remotely, like, rock it. But, like, it'd be so fucking yeah. dope, right? Like, there's just so we much... We need more parts, like, I so just straight up think wacky we need and more cool parts. Stuff. Yeah, no, well, one thing that I want is just better part balance, because there are a lot of parts in this game... But a lot of it just doesn't... just entirely useless and have no yeah, niche. Yeah, there's no niche to it. And, and what sucks is that with the, the Viento, I will always talk about the fucking Viento nerf every single armor cast, so I'm still <laughs> mad about it. Uh, there, okay. there, was a, there was a niche for that weapon. It was the it was the highest stagger per second that you could get in the game, besides, like, Kokolet, which still had more high... That Kokolet had more impact per second, but the Ricochet killed it. Viento was just slightly worse Kokolet, but didn't, didn't have issues with the Ricochet. Plus the recoil was, was not great, and the projectile speed isn't... Quite yeah, exactly. To, the Into is just a a slightly worse Kokolet, but it actually functioned. So, like, yeah. there was a super powerful weapon that lightweights basically used exclusively. Like, if you put that on a heavyweight, it would suck. So, yeah. like, and then they took that away from us. They nerfed Vientos, and then... And they didn't, they didn't... replace it. No, no, exactly. the most important part is they didn't replace exactly. it with They didn't anything. replace it with anything. Like, you might think, oh, it's Sujin, or oh, oh Sampu. That's not the case. Like, it's just not... It's not the same. It's not even close to as powerful as Viento was. So lightweights fall off a yeah. cliff, like really badly fall off a cliff. It's true. Like and, BVO has BVO died. Like JC only uses a double Vientos on his heat sink because his Fissons are his main weapon. His yeah, Vientos he's a sniper. are more of a close range get away from me or I'm going to stun, do the last bit of stun on you, stagger on yeah. you tool. It's true. Like BVO has kind of died for the most part. Which sucks. I mean, even Ramen Rook, like even, I mean, Siligus is the only one. Mr. Viento himself. Dude, only, yeah, like, Siligus is the only one of like the, 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 the three big BVO players that have stuck with the playstyle. Tears. Like it, it sucks. But like the, the thing yeah. is, there are so many weapons in this game and so many could be so cool. Like the Flugel buff. This is, the, this is my favorite buff that they've ever done. They gave Flugel more melee thrust. And that completely changed Flugel from a really bad, like a really just generalist booster that didn't really serve a niche to, it's hey, true. my build doesn't rely on melee, but it still wants a bit of that melee plus. Like, I personally, I use Flugel Booster because it fits laser blade, my, my laser blade playstyle. Plus, like, unlike the Kakaku, it's not like the Kakaku is like terrible in almost every stat except like, except there's melee one thrust. stat it's not terrible at. Like, no, 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 there's melee thrust and I believe like assault boost cost. Assault that's boost it. inefficiency, like, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Ian efficiency, like that's it. Like that's literally it. But like the boost is terrible. The upwards is terrible. Everything about it. it's it's so but razor focused on melee. But Flugel actually allows for hey, I like melee, but I don't want to all in on it, and I want to actually dodge yeah. things when I go when we I go need, sideways. We need we don't need more parts. We need more parts that fill a niche. So we need we need the yeah. buff up parts that are currently bad. Like therapist, therapist and is another buff that I really like. Like it's, it's annoying to fight against, but now we have a good like really long range projectile weapon. Like there are these builds that are coming out. That are like the fast, for example. They got like I think fourth or fifth place the last uh, scuff cup. He's running yeah. dual trainer, and... dual therapist on a on a knock on a knock rider leg uh, AC, and he's basically playing it like a long range sniper, like JC does. Like the therapist actually has a niche now instead of just being a, a joke weapon. 
Like, yeah, that's so Aphrodite funny. uses it as well. Yeah, Aphrodite runs it on a exact a polar opposite. Aphrodite runs it on a on heavyweight like blimp, like elevator kite. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, blimp is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, we're calling it blimp, yeah. which is really funny. But yeah, it, it's just it, <laughs> it's very fitting. It's such a cool thing to see, like these weapons that are these weapons and these parts that are just kind of terrible, and now they're usable because they now serve a niche. Like now you have these arm weapons that have a really long range that are not just missiles, and you just pray that you can hit your hit your target with the missiles. It's so cool to me, and I, we just need more buffs like that. We need more interesting buffs, and not just projectile speed up on the weapon that if it hits, it doesn't do anything anyway. Yeah, like I also kind of miss the um, the really wonky, the really wacky parts that Far Answer had. Do you remember the the Taurus weapon arms? They look like air conditioners, but on like uh, arms, and essentially they, like they would charge conditions? up so much Kojima. And yeah, they had like these Kojima energy like like thing where you would charge it for like almost half a minute, but if you did and if you hit anything, it would one shot it. Like these like kind of funny wacky weapons that are otherwise mostly useless, but for any dedicated players, it would be pretty nasty. I, I oh kind of miss those. Oh my god, they do look like air, they look they look like they look so weird. They're like little. They, they yeah, remind right? me of those things that you put like your your money in at the bank and then you sh you you fly it up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, you. you oh. I'm, I'm gonna post this in here just in case, like, unless because I'm looking at something else. But that's that's the Taurus arms, right? Yeah, yeah. But that looks. Uh, oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, no, uh, Taurus arms. Uh, uh, or answer. Okay, yeah, they look like at, air conditioners. I'm, I'm looking at W A O three Taurus from the Armored Core wiki. These look very, very goofy. Oh, this is Armored Core Nexus. Sorry. Yeah, Armored Core four answer Taurus ace. Next. Um, the weapon arms oh, yeah, are so here cool. Is, I, yeah, they're 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 really cool. Um, here here's a. I want weapon legs. That That's what I want. I want two swords as my legs. Wouldn't that be dope? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. What I mean? Uh, That's what I mean. But this game has like infinite potential. Like armored core can can only go up from here. Like we can get more wacky. We can get more goofy. We can do so many cool things. Sorry. Just... Yeah, this is such a small picture. Oh, but look this at the is. Arms I see. It's the, it's this thing. I I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah, that because yeah. like, the loading I, I kind of miss wacky weapons. Oh, we, we like also we are also missing like the booster, the shoulders that allow for like melee Dude, crazy stuff. I played. I, I know I talk about this all the time, but I played a double <laughs> moonlight lightweight biped with shoulder boosters and back boosters, and that was my main so did AC. I. You're not special. No way did you play that. <laughs> that was your main AC as a kid. That's dope. Dude, we gotta hop on did, like the. Uh, uh, we gotta hop on the emulator right. and we gotta fight. We, we gotta. We gotta yeah, <laughs> how I beat that that very that that last mission of the the most evil ending, which is the hardest mission in my opinion, where you fight like four to five ACs at once with one mm -hmm. AC in your side, and then like uh, in the very in the hard mode, they would add another AC on top of that. I beat it with the with that double the double like you know laser sword, um like back booster <laughs> and and like the assault and the assault uh armor like upgrade like shoulders. Oh god, that was ex exhilarating. Dude, oh, yes. they, there's and, so much potential with this game. I cannot fucking wait. But yeah, the co-op yes, mod. And honestly, the, yeah, sorry. No, you, no, you go ahead. You say words. I was, I was just gonna add a little bit more about co-op mod. Is that like you can yeah, do ahead. a lot of a lot of it is spectacle. A lot of it is like a lot of it is both spectacle and kind of making you feel cool. Like for example, I kind of miss. I feel like this is actually a very good place to add hiring. Do you remember in older older Armored yes. Core games, you were allowed to hire that. MTs and even ACs? Imagine if you had like this currency you could only use in the game, not for parts or anything, but to hire other, pe like, other people. You could hire like a group of eight MTs to I'll kind say, of hold the line against some of the, right? That'd be cool. Like, yeah, or, be other, like, like, mech, like uh, AI controlled ACs on top of your co-op like partner, like where you could spend this currency to just make this mission freaking possible <laughs> for someone of your skill level, let's say. Like or my skill level. Or like, you could so also you use point? that as we, cool. we were talking about raid bosses. Like you could use that exact same thing with um you can use that exact yeah. same thing with like the raid bosses, like you can get some AI partners. And then yes, which would make it which would make it really possible for you know, yeah, for like and of course there'll be multiple like, difficulties. Say, because you have to also think like as a, as a if you're going the if you're doing game design stuff, you have to think about like, okay, what in this online game, what's gonna look like twenty years from now when somebody wants to go back and play it? Like armor play Armored Core seven in twenty forty. Like they're not gonna find people online to play with, so they kind of have to. <laughs> they would have to do yeah, something else. and you'll be surprised how far co-op mode um takes. Like Blizzard, for example, you know that Blizzard is not what the company used to not be. Not great. Um, it's pretty. It's great. pretty shit, and, in my opinion. Yeah, it's 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 not great. 
but and StarCraft, all the people that made StarCraft two. I'm like, gonna like Moby. Have, next time I have on you, every every time I have you on uh, the Armored Cast, I'm gonna set a, a timer. Like I'm gonna have a stopwatch right next to me. <laughs> every time you talk about every time you talk about StarCraft, I'm going to I'm gonna click that timer, and the second it goes down to zero, I don't know what's gonna happen, but something's gonna happen. When that when that timer goes, you're gonna get me twice the next time we meet instead of once. <laughs> oh yeah, I was paid. There was, there was a a joke uh, typical on my stream, uh, twenty dollars to kick Moby in real life, and I it got met immediately. So that's but coming the, but my one point day. Is, I'm trying to do all these illusions because I'm trying to explain just how much potential it has. Starcraft's co-op mode is still popular today, and it is an ancient game. Yeah, hell, if Verdict Day was on stream, if Verdict Day was if Verdict Day was on Steam, people would still play it, like hella. Yes. True, I'll, I'll true. be playing it. I'll be playing it right now. Dude, if we were still online, we'd still be playing it. <laughs> Dude, I want a remaster. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. But if we huh. get like a, the Armored Core collection on Steam, I'm running tournaments for the game. <laughs> I'm playing the games. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'd run so many tournaments for past Dude, gen. I would love to cover next next pilots because next are so cool. Dude, I want it so bad. Next, uh, next are the not most mention, powerful Armored Core. Not to mention we have like modding and stuff. Yes. For those games, like, that'd be so fucking dope. All right, but yeah, the, the co-op yes. mod is—it's gonna change the entire game, and I cannot wait for it. I, I and honestly, I, fuck it, FromSoft, make next the final <laughs> boss of some of these shit. Like, make them fly cool. around at the speed of light. It'd be cool, <laughs> dude. Like yes. something, something I want to do, and I think I talked about about you this about about this with you before. I'm tripping over words. We've been talking for an hour. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was talking about this before. <laughs> but for those of you, for those of you who have played Smash or know of like of this mod, but there's Project I M. Need a timer for you for Smash. For, this is my first time bringing it up. Oh, no, second time, actually. You're right. Never mind. You know what? That's a good point, Moby. I haven't been hypocritical. You're right. But it's also my podcast, so... <laughs> this is power abuse! <laughs> but yeah, so there's a, anyway, there's a mod go. for Brawl called Project M, and it was extremely popular, basically making Brawl play like Melee, but it had, like, new characters, new stages, it had a bunch of cool stuff in the game. And I'm thinking to myself, if we get really good with modding AC6... Why don't I just make my own Project M with like new parts, new boosters, new generators, new frame parts, new maps, new like new mechanics, like all this kind of stuff? Like we could do this. People are already doing this. Like Armory Mod exists. Real, like Vumsy's Balance Patch exists. Can you can you explain to uh, me and the audience what Project M is and how popular it is? So why Project it's a, M. Why it's so relevant. At one point, before Nintendo stopped it, stepped in to cancel the development of the project. Project M was more popular than Smash 4 for Wii U. Oh. Like, it was more played than the most recent Smash game. People loved oh. Project M, basically, and it was super easy to install onto your Wii, and you just loaded up Brawl, you opened the stage, you opened the stage editor, and then immediately you were into Project M and you could play it. So it's its own balance patch, is that yes, what Project M is? Yes, it's its M's? own balance patch, but it, again, it added new characters, it added new stages, it added new mechanics, it had, like, wave dashing, it had, uh, it had L cancelling, which you could even toggle on or off L canceling, which was really cool. L canceling being like you have to press a certain button whenever you land with an aerial to cut your landing lag, which is like the animation that your character does whenever they they land on the ground. Like you could like all this all these cool mechanics that made the game. Like if you look up brawl gameplay versus like Project M gameplay, it's night and day. Mm. It basically made the I think the best Smash game to date. Like in my humble opinion, like it is such a cool game. Like it may, it probably like you know from what I understand, a lot of smash balancing is not suitable for high level PvP. As a result, not only great. a handful of characters tend to be very like <laughs> like usable at, at most, right? So I assume that's what Project M is addressing, right? That like yeah. it makes the balancing so much better, so that you know we don't have like five meta knights, based not five yeah, meta dude. knights, but five like viable characters, and the rest of them are trash. Dude, Project M part. balancing was so like at three point six was like the last version of the game. It was in a pretty decent spot. Like the game was was pretty damn good uh, at that time when when Nintendo forced them to stop development on the game. And Project Plus is like a continuation of it, and they added even more characters. Like I think Knuckles is in the game now, which is pretty funny. Like Knuckles from Sonic. Uh, I think they're also adding Lin from Fire Emblem. It's like the, the mods are so fucking cool when it comes to PvP games because you you would have this community who knows the game inside and out, and they can balance it. And hey, if we get to that point i could just have a new balance patch for the game or maybe a new map like every every week every month every two weeks like i could just update the game whenever hell i can i instead of just like streaming fight clubs or whatever i could just stream myself modding and we and just like course, test out know, the stuff live and, on stream 
Yeah, and of course to show the community that hey, like you know, it's not just you by yourself making it. You're like, hey, I I asked a bunch of people who are highly knowledgeable about the game. Yeah. Like for example, you mentioned Vumzy, and then like that, and then like you you explain. Uh, like, imagine no, if, like, I they... wouldn't call Vumzy good at the game. <laughs> well, no, I'm, like, joking, I'm talking I'm like deep knowledge of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was talking like someone with a deep knowledge of the game, like, um, to like you know help you do the balance patch, and you could explain it every yeah. way. And yeah, you can make a, a project, and that would be very exciting indeed. It'd be cool as fuck. It's like, could you imagine like a trailer dropping on my channel for like the new weapons and such that I'm adding to the the mod that you can go play with your friends right now, like with like new maps and new stages and stuff. Like, I'm, I just the possibilities are endless, and I'm so fucking excited. Uh, I I think yeah, that's dude. I think that's enough for this armored cast because the last one was two hours long and that almost killed me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like this... I really didn't think I would be able to reach like this long. I was like, I don't know if I have dude, enough to time the, to talk. The thing about is, this so game long. is so addicting to talk about because again, the possibilities are just endless, dude. It's so fucking. Yeah, cool. I was able to talk a lot more than I thought. <laughs> you probably could go even longer if I'm not like because they're gonna cut us off here. We could probably go even longer. But thank you all for thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Um the co-op mod should be out now or if it's not out now it should be out soon expect a video on my channel i'll be telling everybody i know i'll tell my fucking mailman that the co-op mod's out <laughs> uh i am just i'm super excited about it and the future of core is really bright and hell the future of fromsoft in general is really bright like you know, like three million people watching the uh i think it was even more than that watching the shadow of the earth tree uh dlc trailer like live what was it, was it 30 million or was it three million or something like that but anyway uh um, number the the future the future of from software is huge and I'm a huge fan of the company and um, except for when they ban my uh, some of my favorite players from their video game because they fixed a fucking corrupted save file anyway I'm gonna cut myself off here Moby where can we find you like <laughs> you can you find do. me in my Moby Geeks Out channel uh, I like a current event I am running is an armor trip challenge where everyone uh, makes builds me their most best looking ACs. Yes. That is not grammar. Anyway, that they're best looking ACs. I still <laughs> continually cover uh, Armored Legends, some of the top players. I plan on covering and Andromeda and oh, Farquaad yeah. next. You have the funny quad yes, shotgun indeed. guy and you have the manual aim LCB sniper coming up, yes, which is indeed. really cool. Uh, yes, indeed. These two have these two have had a very lasting tournament presence, and oh, I cool. wanted to kind of honor that. And Are you going to use the clip of Farquaad doing the 360 no scope on Andromeda in that one tournament? <laughs> I don't know. I might. It depends on. I don't know that. Ask, ask Parkour future hit, movie. Parkour hit a three, a, a manual aim 360, like, I think it was like 200 meters away snipe on Andromeda in one of the tournaments. It was fucking ridiculous. Anyway. Yes, indeed. Uh, I am Shaker Tasa. You can find me over on Twitch. I am, I do tournaments every Tuesday and Thursday. Join the Discord for, uh, for notifications on that. And I hope you all have a good day and hopefully you enjoyed Armorcast. Thanks for listening to the end. And, uh, Moby. I don't know how to end this. I don't know what to end the podcast with. Please stay help. Stay awesome. Stay stay awesome, people. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna stay do awesome we really have happy. to end with stay awesome people. Stay this awesome seems... and happy. Like be happy and, and, and continue uh living and great. <laughs> this isn't you know what this is what a this is what a two looks like on a pers on on a speech roll or whatever. <laughs> and stay living goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. And don't time. die. Don't don't perish, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>